Hare Krishna, I hope not, Maharaj. Then we'll be behind and late and everything. It'll simply fit what's happening in Kaliyu. Unfortunately, Maharaj. How's things in the U.S.? Are they still, things still falling apart? One thing I know, Maharaj, is groceries are very expensive. That much I know. Uh, really? Very expensive. Yeah, some things are the same. Some things are going up. Some things is not available. I was just talking to my dad the other day, and he, uh, one of his favorite simple homemade crackers is out of stock, and he's very sad about it. <laughs> yeah, could, could, could crack you, you know? <laughs> yes, Marge. <laughs> he likes those simple crackers. <laughs> Yeah, that's a luxury. Really get into the essentials. Yes, Marge. Yes. And as the weather is changing, it's getting colder. Almost, it's definitely like fall. Busy preparing for, um, we have our eight-hour kirtan at the temple this Saturday, Marge. Nice, nice. We started doing it twice a year now. One in the first we were doing it once a year. Now we increased it to the spring and Karthik. So now we started doing twice a year. So we have I would, our second. I have a humble suggestion. Yes, Maharaj. I was talking to some devotees here and we were talking about the world situation. And it's one of the plans to um, get the devotees really involved with pushing back the effects of Kali Yuga and bringing in Lord Chaitanya's uh, golden age, they want to start uh, what they call kirtan ashrams for every temple. Mm. That means there would be a, like a building where you just have devotees. Of course, may not apply with a congregational temple, but this is more like a live-in live temple where your devotees would live there at the congregational um, the kirtan building, and then they would go out every day, maybe twice a day, and do harina. So we want to. That's a program they want to push around the world now, and see oh, if we can get. Nice. It. Yeah, that'd be really really powerful. Yes. Yeah. yeah we we got to mobilize the devotees under the understanding that the, the whole. Western world is falling apart. And in order for us to keep our movement moving and to, in, to save the conditioned souls who are going to be part of this fallout, we need to uh, mobilize Harinam more and more. So that's one idea. How to implement that is, is a concern. It's mostly for temples who have live in devotees. Right? I would suggest for temples such as the one you manage is that they would do kirtan more often. Mm -hmm. Like maybe once a week, you can mm -hmm. have your, you can have kirtan at the temple starting early in the morning around 10. Mm -hmm. Go to six o'clock in the evening, have nice lunch in mm -hmm. the middle, and then in the evening have another, some more prashadam. That would attract people. And just have kirtan in the temple, mm. like that, and uh, that will generate a lot of spiritual energy, and also will attract more people to come. I will definitely put the word out in March and try and and work with devotees to see how we can make it happen, because that would be really amazing. Yes, at least once a week. And you can also keep your eye on see who's traveling in the area, and invite them yes. to come. Kirtan, like you're not too far from New York, and New York's got a great Kirtan ensemble there. Oh, the, the uh, I think they call the NYC Harinam, I think is what they call themselves with, with Ramarai Prabhu. Yeah, they've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah, there's many devotees who live in the New Jersey and New York area who are Kirtan mm. leaders. So many, yes. really. Definitely. No, I mean, see, that would be an inspiration for the whole congregation. Uh, uh -huh. And then you can also 
employ the local devotees also in Kirtan. Definitely, Marj. I'm going to put, I'll, I'll put the word out, get some feel from the congregation and how we can start this soon. That'll be really nice. It's uplifting, purifies the atmosphere and pushes back the effects of Kali Yuga very strongly. I'm making notes of your comments, Ma, so I can use your words. <laughs> you know, you want to push it. I'm going to, I'm thinking of how to put together a little program that maybe different temples can adopt. Mm -hmm. On a larger scale, we're also thinking how to fund that so the temples wouldn't have to be burdened with the finances of getting a separate, mm -hmm. we could, uh, fund each of the temples and so they can have a rental hall or have a building of their own where they could uh, regularly do kirtan every day. And not only that, go out into the streets and, and do kirtan. Mm. This is the only thing that's gonna change the face of Kali Yuga and, and bring in Lord Chaitanya's movement. Mass hearty now all around the world. Yes, Marge. I'm catching your keywords and putting my notes down so I can use that to help the devotees get enthusiastic about starting one here at least once a week. And there's a nice pastime in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where Lord Chaitanya Mount marched on the house of Chan Kazi. In ah. the Kazi coming in and breaking the drums of the devotees. And how Lord Chaitanya personally organized and, and took part in that Harinam where millions, literally millions of living entities appeared from all over the universe to take part in that Kirtan with Nityananda, Dvaita, and all the, all the leading devotees were there chanting and dancing. And how it just, the whole atmosphere became so powerful that even people who were Gross materialists were pulled into the kirtan and took part. Even the thieves, people who were thieves, were actually started to chant and dance also. <laughs> so, of course, Lord Chaitanya is still here in his unmanifested form, but he's here in the form of his, his uh, sankirtan movement. So we have, we have something that very, very powerful coming right from the spiritual world. We just need to organize it and propagate it. Yes, Mark. It'll change the whole world, literally, if devotees really take it seriously and get involved. There are many places that are all doing that, but it's kind of, not many, but some places. It's kind of spotty. Imagine having a Harinam uh, crew in every every major temple around the world. Go out every day, right on. Maybe even do books also. Mm. Mm. I'm definitely going to play this part of the class after the class is over, Mar. So I can, if you don't mind much, if I I can steal your words <laughs> and your Please. comments. And, thank you. Steal them, but propagate them also. Thank you, Marge. I'll definitely do that because I really like what you said and, and it was very inspiring and uplifting, as you said, and using your words will definitely you know, um, inspire and uplift the rest of the devotees and congregation to start the it's chanting. Going, it's going to be something we're going to have to do in order to, to uh, not be affected by the, the uh, fallout in Kali Yuga, which is coming more and more regularly. So, uh, yeah, and it's also will bring in, it'll usher in Lord Chaitanya's golden age. Uh -huh. This is what it takes to bring in that golden age. I mean, in a very powerful way. Got it. Yeah, we Thank have something you. very precious, and that is. Yeah. Congregational glorification of Krishna's name. 
cannot be from the spiritual world. It has nothing to do with this material world. And it is the means for, for auspiciousness on every level of existence, personal, uh, congregational, worldwide, everything. Everything centers around the Holy Name. We can get devotees to take it seriously and go out every day. Actually, in a temple in, uh, in in Slovenia, even during the lockdown time, we were we were defying some of the lockdown rules and regulations, and still going out. And it was amazing. We were distributing books and doing harinam, not only through because the winter time was a little hmm. too many people weren't out on the streets. But um, when uh, when it was, you know, when the weather was. Decent, even if it was cold, it was decent. We were out there. <laughs> mm. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. I will definitely work on this, Marge. I'm sure you is... could you know, inspire some. You have some really sincere devotees in that area. Yes. 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 At least once a week, like you said, would be really powerful. Yeah, just once a week, you do it right in the temple. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe like once a month, you can do it in the streets. Mm. That would be a suggestion. Of course, you could figure out how to plan it. But... Because even now, when we go out, sometimes people who are from the America say, where were you guys? We haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> it's so true, Marge. In fact, I think, Marge, it was, I'm trying to think when it was a few months ago, we had a, 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 a we, we took part in the street fair. I think it was April or June, and one person came up to our table, and she said, where were you? And she lives in Harrisburg, amazingly. She says, where were you guys? The last time I saw you guys, I was in the parade at San Francisco Golden Gate in 1967. <laughs> I was like, oh, it was hilarious. And she said, and I saw the old Indian Swami. And she really remembers that. 1967, Maharaj. Yeah, she's been blessed. She's also she's reminding us. <laughs> <laughs> yes so she was happy and she came and she got some books and uh we had i think some cookies or something and she gave us some mama or prasadam it was really interesting yes i see that much yeah and uh, the harinams that we do in europe are, are a little different we mm -hmm. company our harinams with book distributors who yeah. circle our harinam and that makes people more receptive to the books and we also have like ladies with baskets full of cookies so we pass out cookies or some kind of yeah cookies or something like you know, mostly it's cookies or some nice sweet balls or something and that really that that attracts you know like the kids and some of the parents also we well, we started doing that too, just like what you said, Marge. We, uh, we found out that doing the Harinam together with book distribution has been more effective than just Harinam or yeah. just book distribution. When you put them together, we right. find to be more effective. Yeah, they go together really well. We have one book distributor there. They'll go out for two hours with the Harinam, come back with distributing over 100 books. Oh, wow, <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's, he's empowered. Amazing. Marsh, we have 21 people, uh, well, excluding you and me, we have 19. Okay. So we Maybe. we got some time, got them rolling in. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll begin today's lesson from CC. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Avi Leela. Chapter 2, verse 97. 
Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Krishnera Srupera Hoya Sarvida Vilas Prabhava Vaibhava Rupe Dvij Vide Prakash the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna enjoys himself in six primary expansions. His two manifestations are Prabhava and Vaibhava. Mm -hmm. Now, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita turns to the description of the personality of Godhead Krishna in his innumerable expansions. The Lord Brahma expands himself in two categories, namely. Prabha and Vaibhav. The Prabha forms are fully potent like Sri Krishna, and the Vaibhav forms are partially potent. The Prabha forms are manifested in relationship with potencies, but the Vaibhav forms are manifested in relationship with excellences. The potent Prabha manifestations are also two varieties. Temporary and eternal. The Mohini, Hamsa, and Supla forms are manifested only temporarily in terms of a particular age. Among the other Prabhas, who are very, not very famous, according to material estimations, are Dandantari, Rishab, Vyas, Dakatreya, Kapila. Among the Vaibhava Prakash forms are Kurma, Matsya, Narayan, Varaha, Haya, Griva, Krishna, Garba, Baladev, Yagna, Vibhu, Satyasena, Hari, Vaikuntha, Ajita, Vamana, Sarvabhauma, Rishabha, Vishvaksena, Dharma, Setu, Sudama, Yogeshwara, and Brihad, Manu. Mm. What to the next verse? Amsa Sakivesha Rupe Dvivida Dakara Balya Poganda Dharma Dvita Praka. His incarnations of two kinds, namely partial and empowered. He appears in two ages childhood and boyhood. The Vilas forms are six in number. The incarnations are two varieties named Sakyavesh, empowered, and Amsavesh, partial. These incarnations also come within the category of Prabhav and Vaibhav manifestations. Childhood and boyhood are two special features of a personality of Dahit Sri Krishna, but his permanent feature in his eternal form as an adolescent youth. The original personality of God in Sri Krishna is always worshipped in his eternal adolescent form. Namaste Saraswati Devi Moravani Pachari no Nirisis Sumi Vadi Paskatya Rezitani Anchakalpa Thurubhischa Tripa Sindhupe Pachapatitana Pavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Vakta Vindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. So here we're seeing more of the intricate categories of Krishna's different manifestations of himself in the different incarnations and the categories within the different incarnations. Uh, Prabhava and Vaibhava are two manifestations. And one is, in, they also are, some are empowered, some are partial, some are temporary, some are eternal. So the different categories of the Lord's manifestations and their different features they display are categorized accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, this helps us to uh, appreciate even greater the complexity of the nature of the supreme absolute truth, who is, um, you'll see in some, not to minimize any other religious organization, but they do say, well, God is the father and then or God is your, you know, he's your well-wisher, he's the all-powerful protector, he's all, he's all good, he's, he is uh, uh, everywhere. But here, when we find in the Vedic literature, you get into the intricacies of these different manifestations of the qualities of Krishna and the different categories, and that will, you can appreciate more how intricate and how complex the nature of the absolute truth is. But if we actually take it and apply it in our own example in a material way, we find also that we might use an example of a person who is, uh, say he's, a, he's an executive in a corporation. So he has a particular profile in that organization. When he's out on the golf course, he has a different profile. When he is with his friends, maybe swimming, he has a different profile. When he's with his children, different profile. When he's in the intimate association of his wife, he's again uh, seen in a different way. Or feature, or he features himself in different ways according to the relationships he plays in this world. And he may also have different titles. He may be seen as an executive and have a, you know, a particular title as an executive. And then he is also has his name. And then he also has his maybe nickname or pet names, or his wife also may have some intimate name she calls him. So you see, even in the material world, a different person will have so many complexities to their own individual existence. And so um, here we're seeing the same thing with Krishna, but these, these features are much harder to understand than our different relationships that we, we encounter in the material world. But they help us to understand the complexity. And here it says that childhood and boyhood are two special features. Now the word special re really means that they are, they appear and they disappear. Um, of course, there is one Sampradaya called the, uh, the Balabha Sampradaya, which worships Krishna in Bal Krishna or in baby Krishna. But generally, Krishna is worshipped as Kishore Krishna, as Krishna's birth. And that is his eternal adolescent form. So all of our deities in the temple, you'll see, are full size Radha and Krishna deities. And they illustrate his age as Kishore, a youth, along with his internal energy, Shimati Radharani. Both of them are in their teenage years, and which is the height of their, what they say, age categorized development. And so, as Prabhupada, we would say, Prabhupada would say, we worship Kishore Krishna, or Krishna in his sweet form and in the eternal who danced the rasa dance and has relationships with the um, damsels of Vrindavan. So um, the manifestations and the different categories of Krishna's existence are really wonderful. And uh, to get deeper into this, if you go into the uh, 20th chapter of Madhya Leela, you'll find in a very intricate detailed explanation of that entire uh, these categorization. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking to Sanatana Goswami. And in that he describes um, this whole chapter. I can't really say a particular verse, but the whole chapter centers around his um, describing the different uh, by Baba Vailas, by Baba Prakash, Amsa, Vivin Amsa, the different manifestations of Krishna. Here it says, here, 
describes the incarnations such as Purusha avatars, Manvantara avatars, Guna avatars, Shaktivesha avatars. Um, you, also, you also have your Leela avatars. You have Swayam Rupa, Tareka, Etatma, also Avesh. And these are the different branches known as Vaibhava and Prabhava. So here you get more into the different, in the, first, in the chapter we are reading, we're hearing a little bit about the general principles. If you go down to the page, um, go down to the later verses in this chapter, and I think you'll find more and more of the detailed explanations given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It, it goes, it starts down, way down into the chapter and not so soon. Hmm. Here we go here, and then you get the, he speaks about the, the expansions of Krishna actually, and he talks about Mahavishnu, the total material energy, the different forms, the different universes, the different, uh, what they call it, Vishnu incarnations, where they hold their different symbols and different hands, which indicates different um, incarnations of the Lord accordingly. So there's 24 major Vishnu forms. And that's all described. Um, yeah, if you go a little bit up to the chapter, you'll, you'll find some more verses that describe some of the details. Yeah, go back a little bit. I think. Yeah. These are this is very technical but very interesting because it brings us into the complexity of the nature of the supreme absolute truth. And uh, for the sake of uh, explanations, the incarnation manifests itself as Krishna is the original supreme personality of Godhead. From him expands Balaram. Balaram expands as the chapter of Yuha. That the Vyuha is made up of four manifestations of the absolute truth known as Vasudev, Aniruddha, Pradyumna, and Sankarsana. From that Chaturvyuha comes the Narayan manifestations of the Lord, which make up the whole Vaikuntha realm. And then there's unlimited planets, and some of those planets are as big as our universes. <laughs> and so there's unlimited planets in the spiritual world managed by a particular Narayan incarnation who is worshipped in that particular planet. And then uh, from the uh, Narayan incarnations, the second chapter of Yuha manifests Sankarshan, Vasudev, Aniruddha, Prajuna. And from the second Sankarshan uh, expands into Mahavishnu, and Mahavishnu begins the, the unfolding of the material creation. And from Mahavishnu comes Garbhadakshai Vishnu, from Garbhadakshai Vishnu comes Lord Brahma, from Garbhadakshai Vishnu then comes the uh, Shirodakshai Vishnu, the three manifestations of the Vishnu incarnations which bring about the functions of all the material energies and also manifest the, the living entities in the next surge in the material world. So all of these are quite interesting. We should study this. This particular chapter, chapter 20 here, will give you a very detailed explanation. I think it starts from, a, say, earlier verses in this chapter. And uh, yeah, you get some real detailed explanations of the different categories of the instrument. Then you, you can really appreciate the movement of the absolute truth. It's so complex and so diverse, so intricate, and so full of spiritual variety that everything is nicely organized. 
Prabhupada would sometimes use the example of just like in the state, you have your you have your executive head, and then he has his ministers, cabinet members, and then you have the military, and then you have the different agencies, and then you have the different um, categories of agencies who work on both the, nat the federal level and the state level. And so you see a very uh, intricate and very complex a variety of management, even in the material world. So all of this is actually a reflection of the reality of the spiritual world, where it's even more, more complex and more variegated. But by hearing this and reading about this and understanding it, we awaken our bhakti. Our bhakti becomes stronger and stronger as we hear more about the uh, nature of the absolute truth and how he manifests himself in different ways. And his incarnation as um, Shira Dakshai Vishnu is the gateway for all of the incarnation that come from the spiritual world into the material world. It's interesting. It's more like the immigration process. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good example or not. As the Lord wants to appear in the material world, he goes through the gateway of Shira Dakshai Vishnu. Even the Supreme Personality of God as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says he appears from Shirodakshay Vishnu. But he is superior to Shirodakshay Vishnu. It's just his means for entering into the material world. One of his functions. And the Lord's categories are so, there's 16 major energies of the Lord. And in those 16 energies, there's sub-energies. He has his Kriya Shakti, he has his Bala Shakti, he has his, um, what else, Shribu, uh, his uh, Bu energy, his Shri energy, all of these things are there. And then he has many more categories of himself, his uh, Samvit energy, which is the manifestation of how he knows everything, everywhere, at all times, is the, uh, the Ladini Shakti, is his internal pleasure and energy, where he experiences pleasure through that energy, which is manifested by Srimati Radharani, who is the controller of the internal pleasure energy known as Ladini Shakti. Some bit, uh, what is the some bit Ladini and some Sandini? Sandini is his eternal aspect by which he maintains the entire spiritual world. So, all of these different aspects of the absolute truth are all very interesting to learn and to. We should make a study of this because just like you go to school when you want to learn a subject matter, you study the subject matter according to the texts that are given, and you may also refer to other texts to, to support more understanding and information. So, um, yeah, Chaitanya Charitamrita is really quite complex in describing the nature of the spiritual world and the uh, different manifestations of the Godhead and the different roles they play. Like it says in one, the first verse we met, there is in one uh, manifestation, he divides himself into his excellence and in, into his supreme power. His excellence and his, his qualities, such as his beauty, his fame, his knowledge, his... Um, his strength, his, uh, uh, his renunciation, and his, um, um, his wealth. All of these are his excellences. And so when he manifests a particular incarnation, just like, for instance, in his Brahmana incarnation, the, the dwarf Brahmana who appeared in the assembly of Bali Maharaj, he manifested his excellence and beauty. He was so beautiful that immediately he attracted the attention of everyone as soon as he walked into 
Krishna have assembly. So Krishna uses his excellences in order to perform his pastimes in the material world. And one manifestation may be more than the other, just like in his, in his excellence as Lord Balaram, he exhibits tremendous amounts of strength. So um, you can see how Prasya Shakti Vidhaya Suyate Svavangviki Gnana Balakri Acha. What is that verse? Maybe you can find this verse. It's, uh, I just quoted the third and fourth line. Uh, Parasya Shakti Vidhaya Suyate Svavangviki Gnana Balakri Acha. I can't remember the first two lines of the verse, but it's in the Swaita Svatara Upanishads. Yeah, that's, you can find it there. And I think it's verse 3.35, if I'm not mistaken. Marge, can you say that verse again so I can type it out here, Marge? Yeah, it's in the Swaita Svatara Upanishads. Swaita Svatara. Wow, that's T A R A, but that's all one word. Hmm. Upanishads. And see if you can you can find that verse there. I think it's um hmm. let's see. It's quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita somewhere. Or look for 3.36. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, I think it's 3.36 or 3.35. Chaitanya Charitamrita in which Leela Mamaraj? Uh, Madhya Leela? Well, no, I'm still talking about the punishment. Probably if I do it this way, it might help. Let me just check if I can do a, a Swetara. Oh, Upanishad. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, chapter let's, three, you said, Marge? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, it's going to, uh, I should put Escon over there. It's going to come out the right way, I guess. Let's see. I'm going to put this with Taro Parisha. Let's see. But I should shock you with a higher suya day. I guess oh, you can. That's, yeah, I think that I part. went to the, the Vani quotes. Mm -hmm. Um, it's that's two quotes by uh, it says Chaitanya Charitam is three one and three two. Is that it, Maharaj? Um, I'm not sure where it, it is in the CC, but it might be there. Oh, let's okay, see. Let me... Yeah, here is here. Okay, here, here it is. I think per four three twenty two. And if you go back, go back up the page a little bit. It was 322. I, I was just reading the translation there. 322. Let me go up again, Marge. This one right here, Marge? Mm. No. Let's see. Um, let's see. He does the real thing. Let's see. That's not it. Yeah. Go down the page a little bit. Let me see. The next one. Okay. Stop right there. Um, They keep going. Three eight. They do. Let's see. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Now maybe you can just do an insert. Parasya. P a r a s y a. P a r a s. Y A. 
think I saw it. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's Madhya Leela. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Okay. 1365. 11 verses 1143 per four. Natasha Karam Karanancha Vidyate. Natasha Madhya Charita Vidyate. Parasha Sakya Virahaya Suyate. Prabhavi Gigiana Bala Kriya Cha. So Bhagavad Gita 1143 per four. There. Well, here it always in it was in the previous verse too. It was in the previous verse. Okay, then it took me uh, to this verse instead. So I'll I'll go back, Maharaj. It's really amazing verse. Uh, here, okay, I saw uh, here. Oh, go down again. Go down. Yeah. Okay. It is. It's right there, right at the top of the page. Okay, stop right there. Oh, uh, where is it? I lost it. <laughs> so. uh oh, pa you said parashya. Let me try that again. P this is the verse here. Sweet is Upanishad. Six it's a bit up, Mataji. Just, just one up? verse. Up. Okay. Up. <laughs> it's 6.8. Sweet yeah, is Upanishad. Is this it, Maharaj? Yeah, 8.22. Yeah, 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 yeah. It says a uh, CC Madalila's th th 1365 purport. Shall, shall I go there, Maharaj? Yeah. Okay. 60 Madhya 1365. Madhya 1365. Let's see if there's an explanation of the verse. Is that it, Maharaj? Yeah, for us, it's not the, Okay, here we go. Yeah, there you go. The Supreme has multi-potent multi potency, which acts so perfectly that all consciousness, strength, and activity are being directly so directly directed solely by his will. So then you can read. And that was an example of how the Lord appeared in all of the different Sankirtan groups at the same time, and every group thought that he was in only their particular group. So that was a manifestation of that, uh, one of his energies, where he appears in different places, and he can only be seen where he is, not from the outside, unless he gives that vision. Yeah. So sometimes he manifests these for the sake of performing his pastimes. But here, the, the, here's, the, here's the summary. They All of his energies act so perfectly, they have consciousness, strength, activity, and are being directly sold, solely, directed solely by his will, which means that he simply desires something to happen. And then all of a sudden the energies jump into action and it manifests his will accordingly. So Krishna doesn't have to go anywhere <laughs> to get things done. All he has to do is think <laughs> or just desire. He doesn't even have to think. All he has to do is want something to happen and automatically the energies immediately start moving in that direction. And they manifest according to his will, and they're always perfect. So he's, he's all power. Therefore, he's all powerful. Therefore, he's everywhere at the same time. And at the same time, he's not everywhere. He's localized in, his, in the spiritual world or in the hearts of all his devotees or all living entities. So Krishna is amazing. He's everywhere at the same time he's in one place. <laughs> but he, he can appear anywhere through his energies or he can, uh, or his energies can manifest his will through his own desire. When you know all of this, you only have one thing to say, how can I surrender, Lord? <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> I have no independence. I have nowhere to go. Everything is you. Everything is controlled by you. Everything is ultimately meant for your service. 
when we wake up to that reality, then we understand that devotional service is the only uh, activity of the of the living entity. That's all. All other activities are just ephemeral. It's more like dream states of existence that simply cause one to uh, waste time doing things that don't have anything. Just like when you go to sleep at night, you waste time. <laughs> you don't do anything. And then in the end, then you create another world in your, in your uh, sleep state, which is known as the dreaming state. And then there you act in a certain way. And here you're going through your whole life uh, experience and sometimes in a, in a dream. But it's all a dream. It's a waste of time. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you at all. And so, yeah, so when we understand that even this material manifestation on the on the gross level, which we are every day in contact with, is another form of that same dream state, although it appears to be more real than the dream state. Actually, it's not more real. It's only more permanent, or we might say longer lasting. The difference between dream existence and our waking existence is a is simply a duration of time. That's all. We're also dreaming. Where I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm an Indian, I'm an Afro, I'm a Caucasian. I'm old. I'm young. I'm sick. I'm rich. I'm happy. I'm miserable. These are all forms of the same dream state. Our real existence is, is spiritual. Everything else is uh, just like uh, a created mental concoction, which is called dream. That's why Lord Chaitanya says the whole material world is simply a mental concoction. Oh. But it seems so real that we can't really, uh, really step aside from that reality and see it for what it is. There was so much in it. But as we, as we decrease our desire to enjoy in the material world, we also can start to see ourselves different from everything material. And we are functioning in the material world through our existence as a spiritual being, but we're using material energy to function. That's all. And then we see ourselves different. So sometimes we say, just step back and watch yourself and see, and just watch your thoughts, watch your activities, watch how you do things and do it from a position of neutrality. Don't judge it. Don't um, get involved in it. Just watch it. And then you can see, uh, you can be part of it or you cannot be part of it. You have that choice. But because we have the material desires, we all, we all become part of it. Just like there are people who leave their body and they float outside of their body in their subtle body, and they can move around in their subtle body. But because they still have gross material desires, they are forced to come back into their material body again by that power of those desires. Or when, just like the yogis, when they free themselves from all material desires, then they can elevate themselves to different planets within the created universes, simply by the power of the, the yoga, yogic practice. Mm -hmm. They can go from planet to planet, and they can go from place to play. Some of you powerful yogis can even go to the to the outskirts of the spiritual world. So stepping back helps us to reflect on our existence in this material world. But we like it here. <laughs> we think, what would I do without my husband, my wife, my kids, my cooking pots? <laughs> well, 
how would I live? <laughs> it's not so bad. It's this example of uh, Prabhupada tells the example of Indra. When Indra committed an offense in the heavenly planets, he was kicked out of heaven. He was cursed to take birth as a pig in the material world. So now he's a pig and he's surrounded by his pig wife and all his pig kids. And he's oinking away and eating his stool, wallowing in the mud. And then, um, but there's nobody to manage the heavenly planets. And so um, there's problems in the heaven. So they contact Lord Brahma. Hey, you got to bring Indra back here. And there's this chaos here because nobody's managing. So Brahman goes to Indra, who's now in the form of a pig in the material world, and says, Indra, you know, um, you got to come back to the heavenly planets and uh, manage. He says, well, you know, how can I do that? I got my pig wife, I got my kids, I got my nice mud, and there's some really fresh stool that I haven't really tried yet. I'm looking forward to that to, to tonight's dinner. So all of these things, you know, this pig-like interest is just like, he can't see himself leaving that. He's so attached to it. So Brahma's thinking, what am I going to do? We need Indra back, and he's so attached to him. Take life. And so Indra's Brahman arranges for his kids to start being killed one after another. And then his wife, and then there's nothing left except him and his mud and his, you know, dried off stool. So then finally, when there's nothing left, and he says, all right. <laughs> so the living entity is like that. No matter how bad our situation is, we won't give it up. <laughs> because we think it's the best. Prabhupada talks about, you know, in, in this place called Greenland, Greenland is just like, it's just ice. That's all it is. People live in these igloos, these ice houses. And, they, and then they're like, you know, it's really cold. But now if you if someone said to you, could you live like that? You would think, my God, that's horrible. But there are people like that who they like it. That's what they, they were brought up in it. They think this is it. I'll, you know, don't take me out of my igloo. Because, you know, that's all they know. Or that's all they want to know. So yeah, we um, the living entity gets so attached in its material world that it takes a catastrophe to really uproot that attachment. Sometimes uh, cataclysm or some calamity in their life, and they start to think, "Well, maybe it isn't so nice down here." <laughs> Uh, therefore, you know, when we understand from the point of view of the absolute knowledge from Shastra, from Guru, that this whole material world is simply controlled and the spiritual world and the, the realms in between, everything is controlled, operated, and managed by the Supreme Personality, either directly or through his different energies. Nothing, and it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, and this verse is mentioned here. Maya Dakshena Prakriti, Suyate Sacharacharum, Etunana Konteya Vidavi Parvi Partante. See if you can bring up the, uh, no, it's the other way. You have to go the other way. You're going the wrong way. Go down the page. Yeah. There you go. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O Son of Kunti producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated. Right? So this material energy, all of it, not just part of it, is all one of Krishna's energy. And he is in complete control of this energy through his different smaller energies, which manifest his will through, through different, different aspects of the material energy. And that's the same with his Parashya Shakti, the highest Suyate. His spiritual energies are also manifesting his leelas, his pastimes, his relationships in 
with his uh, devotees. Everything is controlled and operated by Krishna at all times, at all places, everywhere. At, and to know that means there's no other thing you can do but just Hare Krishna. <laughs> Can't get away from Krishna. He's there. So you can have him as your jailer or you can have him as your lover. You can choose which one you want. He's either your jailer or your lover. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a wonderful class and taking us through this journey. I was really uh, having a question in my mind, but I would ask devotees to first, if anyone would has any questions, any um, clarification, I'm just going down the list so I don't miss anybody. We have about 23 participants, so I want to make sure. And if you have a question, if you could just raise your hand. Actually, I'll stop sharing. That would be better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't miss anybody. And if you could turn on uh, turn on your videos, that would be nice so that we can have each other's, um, we can see each other and do a little bit of association on Zoom, if that's possible. Please do turn on your camera. If there are any questions, Hare. go ahead. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for the class. And the way you ended it was so, so uh inspiring and thought provoking it's not can either be a jailer or a lover <laughs> so i put it down it's not going to be a jailer material or lover and spiritual <laughs> you were saying though that uh some of the yogis so this is kind of outside the point but you mentioned though some of the yogis can go um beyond the spiritual world or outside the spiritual world, something. So then I said, what is outside the spiritual world? <laughs> I was thinking of the the uh, the realm of, um, of Maheshtam, which is between material and spiritual world, which is the, the abode of Lord Shiva. Because the, uh, the um, um, Brahma Samhita says, Maheshtam, Haridam, and Devidam are the three realms of existence. Maheshtam is the realm of Shiva. Devidam is the material world. And, and Haridam is the spiritual world. So these are the three Dhams. So Shiva has his own separate realm that is in between the material and spiritual. And spiritual. Hmm. Mm. Thank you very much. Controller of all the dams. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Sri Devi, please go ahead. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances on glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for this very exhaustive explanation of the incarnations, how the manifestations happen. As you were speaking, I was thinking about, you know, the secondary chapter view, Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, and then Brahma and so on. Now, Brahma is known as the secondary creator or the secondary engineer of the material universe. At the same time, uh, Durga Devi, is also in charge of the material universe. So I was uh, wondering how do those things overlap or she's under Lord Brahma or they work yeah. together? Yeah. He's on the ground and he's, he's in charge. It's more like the temple president and the temple commander. In other words, he put uh, through, uh, what is that verse? Um, Dene Brahma Yudha Adi That Krishna inspires Brahma within the heart and gives him all the knowledge he needs to know in order to execute his role as the secondary creator. And then 
having, after having cultivated that knowledge, he manifests himself or he expands himself into the through of 10 different sons who are the source of all of the upcoming manifestation after the, the latest interim uh, annihilation. So those 10 manifestations are called, some of them are called Prajapati, just like Daksha is one of his sons. And they produce the living entities and they also produce the different bodies of the manifestations. They don't produce the living entities, they produce the different bodies, the 8,400,000 species of life. And then when you get down, so when these manifest in the material world, according to their different karma that was there when the last manifestation ended, they take birth again. And then on the level of karmic activities, then you have Durga baby there. And she's the superintendent of the material world. She's like the jailer. The word Durga, Dur means go and ga means difficult. So Durga, another word for Durga is fort. So to get out of a fort is very difficult. So that's the analogy. So this material energy that the living entities are directly encased in is controlled by Durga Devi, who is Maya Devi herself. And one of her features, but Maya has many features. So Durga is one of those features. She's, she's you know, Vijaya, she's Ambika, she is uh, Bhadra Kali, she is uh, Bhadra. She is different manifestations of herself to give the reactions of the living entities according to their level of material activities, mostly in the, the modes of passion and ignorance. Okay. So she's on the ground. <laughs> and Brahma is the, is the source by which all of this unfolds. And he gets his power from Krishna himself. Directly. You might say Durg is an age or is an, is the agency in this material world. I see. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. And then her sweeter side, she also manifests as a sweeter side, and that is the wife of Lord Shiva with Parvati. Who is who is Durga is an expansion of Parvati, who also is known as Sati or Uma. So the female manifestations of the absolute truth, in terms of their uh, material surfaces, are all within the realm of uh, um, Shiva Shakti. That's why Shiva is called the father of all living entities. He is, he is empowered just like um, the, the super soul. Shiva, there are three living entities who know everything about all living entities. That is Shiva, Yamaraj, and uh, the Lord in the heart as uh, Antaryami or super soul. Because in order to create the manifestations of the material energy, Krishna takes the help of Shiva. In his form as Mahavishnu. When Mahavishnu wants to create, he glances in a certain direction. That glance is picked up by Ramadevi and brought to the aggregate of the material energy, which is all of the energies in an unmanifested form. It's called Pradhan. And that glance is actually Shiva. 
And in that glance, there are three principles. There are the time factor, their living entities are in that glance, and it's an energy of Lord Shiva. It's a, it's a very bright halo, it's a glowing halo. And that's the glance of the Lord, which is actually non different than Shiva. That's why we, when we say that actually uh, Advaita Charya was the manifestation of Mahavishnu and Lord Shiva in one person. And this is very technical, but you can read about it in the uh, second canto, some of it in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and in other scriptures also that describe the, um, the unfolding of the creation. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So then, Yuga Devi, being on the ground, she is the one who encages all the living entities in their different bodies. Is that correct? Uh, she's Maya herself, but she's a certain element of that Maya energy. Okay. She rides on a what is it? She rides on a uh, tiger, right? And uh, you'll see that sometimes she carries a sword and she's punishing the living entities. But Durga is a punishment agency, more, more or less, as opposed to Sati or Uma or Parvati, who is also part of the material energy. But she's not so much the punishing agency. She's more or less the agency that grants some kind of material benefits. So everything is highly organized, you know. You go into a mall, you find you have the different shops, and then you have the different clerks in the shops, and then you have the different uh, categories of products. Everything is organized. You want one category type of one type of product you go to one shop and you want a different product you go to a di different shop you talk to the clerks and get the idea on what how the how the product works so you see even when you're living in the material world there's so many categories in order for you to uh, access your desires but all of this is controlled by Krishna ultimately Oh, that helps you, Devi. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of uh, reading to be done to understand. It's a very complex subject matter. And uh, what Guru Maharaj has given is a broad understanding for me to get the overall picture. So I'll have to do reading. Yeah. Thank you. If you really want to know a condensed version of all of this technicality, there is a series of lectures on the Brahma Samhita. The Brahma Samhita really opens up all of these complexities in a very detailed way. And that there's only one person I know in the entire Islam society that ever give a, a lengthy and very detailed description of this, and that was Tamal Krishna Goswami. And he did two series of lectures, one in 19... 90 in Mayapur and one in 1991 in Vrindavan. And so he takes the verses in the Brahma Samhita. And if you just listen to those verses, that explanation, each, each lesson is about an hour long with questions. He'll, um, it's, it's amazing. You'll get a real insight of the complexity of the unfolding of the creation and the different aspects on how they work in relationship to that unfolding. Yes, Guru Maharaj. If anybody wants to, yeah, I have a copy of these lectures and I highly recommend the Vrindavan on 1991. I think it was even more developed than the 1991 he did in my opinion. But it's so big, I can't really
I actually found uh, Tatma Krishna Swami's uh, tape ministry online. Yeah, look for Thomas Samita, 1990, 1991. Mars, the link that I posted here is from 1991, Vrindavan VIHE by Tatma Krishna Maharaj. Yeah, that's the best. It has all of it there. And it's not lengthy. Each, each lecture is an hour. Mm -hmm. So lectures, I think, how many lectures are there? Maharaj, he now. covered um, verses 1 through verses 62. And I think it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. About 20 lectures? Right, that sounds right. So sit down and uh, you can eat lunch to each one of those lectures every day. That's how I did it. I just was listening to it while I was taking lunch. <laughs> of course, if you want to do it directly, you can sit there and just listen. It's really interesting. I'm really inspired to listen to it again because it's so amazingly revealing. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad that it's still online. It says that Tamal Krishna Goswami tape ministry, and that's where it, it was on. Right. Any questions from devotees and any uh, clarification? Marja, I have a... Um, Dear Krishna, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for uh, such wonderful, wonderful points and inspiring us for the Kirtan in the beginning of the class. Um, I have a question uh, or a concern about, uh, you know, what, what I have been observing, like if I consider myself, what is lacking in most of us is that risk-taking ability for Krishna. And that's what you all did. And that's how the whole movement exploded or, you know, spread across everywhere. And if we just talk about going out and on the streets into Kirtan, I think it's a, it's a, we feel it's a risk. And we, I mean, certainly I, I, I lack that uh, ability to take, uh, you know, th these kind of risks. How to inspire ourselves like you all did in your uh, early days? And even still keep on doing the same thing. Just get together with a group of devotees and start discussing. You inspire each other. You discuss it and then start to see, based on your discussions, how you can actually implement it. Start off gradually and then as you gradually develop it, you'll get more and more ideas how to expand it. But if you try to do it yourself, it becomes hard. You need to forget, find others who are inspired by the same thing and a little group discussion. Make your plans. Yeah, you're right. Our movement's getting a little bit sedated. The risk taking there is, it's still being done in certain areas of the world. But in general, because we have so much material facilities now, we take it easy. In the early days, we didn't have any material facilities, nothing, zero. All we had was Prabhupada's instructions. <laughs> Maharaj, how can we go beyond that? And I'm, I'm just piggybacking on um, Dear Krishna's question is um, that, and I like the word that you use, sedated, because that's a perfect way to, de to, to describe it. Because, and, and because, like you said, it's material comforts. And I know myself and Prashad, we, we've had this discussion, we, you know, is that when we get so comfortable materially, we don't want to put one step out of the house. So how can we really 
uh, come out of a comfort zone, Marge? What does it take to come out of the comfort zone? How can we kick ourselves? Something quite radical, but I think. Yeah, well, Maya's going to. Force you ultimately either you do it voluntarily or you're going to be forced to do it just to survive. Your energy is becoming very, very, it's going to be kicking. The United States is going through some tremendous purification right now. And a lot of it is, is just the reaction to the sinful activity. Um, unless we start to wake up to be, uh, well, we can, I think, I have an obligation. Sir Prabhupada and his devotees have been merciful, and then because of him, I have found my life in devotional service. Now, let me do something. Now we reciprocate the gifts that I have received. Let me do the same thing. Let me somehow or other get involved in spreading Christian practice. As time goes on, we'll find we'll be more or less forced to do it. But don't wait for that. Uh, did we lose Chandramani Swami? Yeah, we did. Okay, we can wait for him to come back. We'll wait for Marsh to come hey. back. I'm sure he's going to come back. Yeah. There he is. Yeah, hi. Okay, let's see if there's any more comments or questions maybe if we remember the time when the bombs were raining down on India and Srila Prabhupada went on on Harinam at that time <laughs> maybe that would give us some inspiration if if the founder charge at the time can have us you know can get some devotees to go out and chant in a critical time when anybody could leave your body at any time. Maybe if we get in that emergency mode, that would maybe inspire us to go out more. They're doing that, they're doing that during the Ukraine war. The only is still coming together and preaching and associating and have their times. They're not able to move around so easy, but they're not leaving the country, staying there and preaching. Very bold, wonderful. Yeah. Krishna, would you like to ask more? Because I, I think there's something no, in uh, your mind still floating. Yeah, because uh, I was uh, just wondering because Mar Maharaj, right before the class, he was very serious about uh, this thing. And I also heard recently from some uh, a devotee that the reason uh, the movement is not it's spreading so fast now because most of the temples they are not going out and doing sankirtan, and that's the reason we don't see uh, enough devotees coming uh, back or uh, not enthusiastic. So uh, thank you, Maharaj, for uh, you know just steering at least our minds into that direction. Thank you. I think we lost Maharaj again. Yeah, oh, there he is. How are you wrong? Uh, yes, connection is slow. Yeah. I think the connection. Oh, at least we maybe, maybe Maharaj, you can you're on mute, Maharaj. No, I'm, I'm off you. No, I'm not muted. Oh, okay. Now, okay. okay, now we can hear you. Okay. One more question, Maharaj. Very, very important question. When are you coming to Pennsylvania again? 
when you start doing regular harinam. <laughs> oh, oh, Dear Krishna, we have work to do, Dear Krishna. You and I have to talk. If we we will go out together. Right. We will go out together. We will we'll go out together. Oh yes, Marsh. You know what, Marsh? You know that's a good idea, Marsh. Next time you come, Marsh, let's go out together for Harinam. Is that okay, Marsh? Please, please. <laughs> I would, I would consider that the the best part of my business. It would be ecstatic, Maharaj, if you were there down, you know, downtown street Harinam. Oh my God, it's going to be like fire. Harrisburg is it's got a good history of Krishna consciousness there. The roots, the seeds are still there. Sri Devi, go ahead. Yeah, you have a question, please. Yeah, it's exactly about this Haridam. I would love to join the Haridam. The Haridam here goes every morning, 6.30 to 8.30 every day. That means if I join the Haridam, I will be missing the whole morning program. Darshanati, Guru Puja, class, everything. So I've always been hesitating because for me, morning program is very dear. I just love to be in the morning program. But this conflicts with the hurry now. So I'm in a quandary now. Should I skip going to the temple and join the hurry Nam party? No. Well, first of all, that's incorrect what you just said. There is three hurry Nams going on every day. There's one from, from four o'clock to six in the evening. There's one in midday and there's one in the morning. So if you just connect with Jivanath, Jivanath is inspiring all these Harinams and devotees are coming. Every Wednesday at the, at the uh, Samadhi Mandir, there is a Harinam program Right during the Guru Puja, the Guru Puja starts at 7.30, and after that, there is a Harinam program inside. So, uh, I, you know, every day I see the Harinam party. It's, it's out there three times a day, every day, not just early morning. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for that reminder. You're right. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, any other questions from devotees before um, we lose Maharaj again because of the connection? <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned. Any other last minute questions, clarification? Maharaj, there's one question that I wanted to ask Maharaj, and you spoke about um, trying to find my notes here. You spoke about watching from the point of neutrality. And I was wondering when, well, when a person is going through challenges, you know, in material life, and at the same time, they really want to uh, pursue spiritually, but sometimes the material life is so rocky that it affects, you know, their, their, their mind or their, their, uh, their, their, their emotions and whether to move forward. So how can one step aside and watch from a point of neutrality when they are in it, Maharaj, when they're dealing with so many challenges? Oops, I think I lost Maharaj again. You just have to step back and do it. Mm -hmm. Before you can watch, you have to go out of it. It's like you watch your thoughts sometimes and you say, this is what's going on in my head. So you see the thoughts and observe the thoughts. You don't analyze them or judge them, you simply watch. Mm. So, how you're doing what you're doing. Mm. Step back. It's, it's, like it's not a long-term thing, it's a good thing where you just step back and just say, what do I have to do with anything that I'm around me right now? 
Mm. 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 But using that principle that any activity in this world is connected. And if we want to do that to ourselves, we can also do that. What stay connected is our desire, but the disconnection. Mm. So we you know we take that desire at least within the mind. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Yes, I'm sorry, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Any other questions from devotees? Any thoughts? Any clarification? Any questions on your mind that you would like Marsh to clarify for us? And going down the list here, so I don't miss anybody. If there are no questions, Marge, what would you like me to do? Would you like to end with a round chanting before we lose your connection? Or would you like to just end the class, Marge? Yeah. Thank you, so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for that wonderful lecture. Hi, Krishna. Thank you so much. Again,
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama,
I'm 
Krishna, Krishna. Rai Krishna Chaitanya Guru Pananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Guru Bhakta Guru Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama thank you so much Maharaj and thank you to all the devotees for joining us have a wonderful wonderful day Thank you. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.